Robert Davis with Real Estate Wealth Coaching. And I want to thank everybody for coming on tonight's meetup. We are going to be discussing the topic of private lending and essentially how private lending can really help you uh, expand and grow your business uh, because it can, it can just do so much. Re having access to private financing is critical. And, and le unless you're rich and wealthy and have, you know, a couple million dollars of your own money, you may not ever need a private lender. But if that's not the case, then we're going to discuss private lending. Uh, I've got a great guest that we're going to talk to tonight. Uh, I'm going to sh share my screen here real quick because I got a few little intro slides that we're going to hit. Bear with me here. I'm going to get it going. Come on now. Come on now. All right. All right, here we go. So again, thank you everybody for joining us tonight. And we still have some that are jumping on here, which I'll admit them as, as we go. But my name is Kurt Davis with Real Estate Wealth Coaching. We are based out of the Memphis, Tennessee area, and we work with investors all over the country. Uh, if you are not following us, uh, make sure to uh, like and friend our page on Facebook. Instagram, and especially Meetup. Meetup's really where we post a lot of our uh, monthly meetings like this. We really try to communicate with a lot of people through there and Facebook. So make sure you're following us at least a minimum on Facebook and Meetup. Also, if you are not a subscriber to our YouTube page, go to YouTube and search for Real Estate Wealth Coaching and make sure you click that subscribe button. Uh, we put out a ton of great content videos, uh, everything from wholesaling to fix and flips, buy and holds, strategies. I've got a lot of great interviews on there with uh, investors, wholesalers, just talking about stories. We've even got videos of investors, uh, and we follow them along through their their success of either flipping deals or doing a burst strategy property. Uh, but it's just a great place to get a lot of free information. So make sure that you subscribe and watch our videos. All right. So tonight's sponsor is Avalon Capital. And Avalon Capital is a private lending company that's based out of the Memphis, Tennessee area. And Avalon Capital makes private loans to investors who are uh, really looking to, and it's kind of what we're going to talk about tonight, but they make loans to investors who are looking to essentially do fix and flips or buy and holds and the occasional uh, transactional funding. So those are kind of the three main focuses that Avalon talks about. Um, make sure that you follow Avalon Capital uh, on Facebook, and I put the link right there so you can check them out and find them. And of course, look for this logo. You'll see them. Um, if anybody in, in Craig, the owner of Avalon Capital, is in the process of, uh, I don't know if Craig's building a website or not just yet, but we actually have a link right, right now to where if you want to get a hold of Craig, I suggest mainly going through Avalon Capital through the Facebook page, or you can go to realestatewealthcoaching.com backslash private lending. And you can fill out a contact form there to reach Craig Jennings as well. Uh, and normally this is where I would give a pitch about the, the terms and the fees, but we're actually going to get to that just a little bit later because Craig is going to be my main guest tonight and we will get to that shortly. <clears throat> we are, if, if anybody's in the Memphis area, if anyone on here happens to be a wholesaler or doing virtual wholesaling in the Memphis, North Mississippi area, we are looking to buy houses. We can pay cash and do fast closings. There's a, a sizable list of all the zip codes where we ideally like to buy property. Uh, essentially, we're looking for three bedroom, one bathroom homes minimum or more. Occasionally, we'll do a two bedroom in certain areas. Uh, I've put my email address there and my cell phone. So if you've got something you want to email me or send me a text message, uh, you can reach me that way. All right, on to tonight's meetup, which is titled How to Use Private Lending to Maximize Your Real Estate Business. Uh, we have a special guest here tonight. I'm going to stop sharing my screen here. Craig Jennings, can you? Hey, Craig, Kurt. are you there? I'm here. All can right, you hear me? buddy. I can Great. certainly hear you. 
Craig Jennings is going to be our, our guest tonight who I'm going to talk to, and we're going to put a heavy, heavy focus on the world of private lending. Now, the reason why I have Craig on, because he's always been a generous sponsor uh, for us, but essentially Craig is the ideal type of private lender that somebody is looking for. And we're going to, and you're going to learn all about Craig, his private lending terms and everything like that. We're going to, but we're going to kind of go over private lending as a whole here tonight. So Craig, give us a little bit of background. Not, not necessarily like for where you were born, <laughs> but uh, give us a background in terms of your investing experience. You know, things like, you know, where did you start? Do you own property? Have you ever wholesaled? That kind of stuff. How, 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 is, how has your real estate investing experience involved in terms of how long you've been an investor? You know, I started really investing in about 2001. So really uh, 20 years we've been doing this. And I have, um, you know, kind of started out like you guys, probably wanted to buy and was interested in passive income and everything else. And there's no shortcuts. We started buying rentals. I bought rentals in nice areas, put them on short-term, uh, you know, 15-year mortgages, built equity, did it the old-fashioned way. And during that time, we bought a, a home investors franchise, which I don't know if you guys know what that is. It's a we buy ugly houses, uh, kind of a national franchise, and we got into the house flipping business. While we continued to grow our uh, own rental portfolio, we started uh, wholesaling homes and flipping homes. And ironically enough, we got we were able to do that by using hard money lenders. Um, up till about probably three years ago, I relied exclusively on hard money lenders for my purchasing and selling of real estate, and it's. It's a, it's a, it, I used it as a tool that allowed me to get where I am today. So that was a big thing. So over the years, we, we, we built a bit, a decent sized, you know, amount of nice homes, probably, probably about 50 homes. I don't have an incredible amount of homes, but, um, they're usually more upscale, two to three hundred thousand dollar type of homes. And, uh, so we have those. And, uh, over the years, we, we work closely with investors just as, you know, friendly competition and, people we do business with. And uh, we, about five years ago, we started doing private, uh, the private lending business. And uh, that's just kind of what got us there today. There's not really a whole lot of specifics I have on that, but I just, we just grew it really slowly over 20 years. It doesn't seem like 20 years, but we did it the right way. And I did the right things and went from the kind of the arc I see, how the, I see things go in the real estate community. People start, wholesaling is the first step, which means they, they're buying homes, maybe doing assignments because they don't have the cash they need, build up some cash. They either start buying some rentals to buy and keep and start building up a little wealth and, uh, you know, build up enough wealth and they get into the private lending. And that's, that's kind of the arc. I see a lot of uh, some of the older guys like me that are in it that, that get into, it's kind of a natural arc. If somebody uh, asked you, in a simple term, what is private lending? Because, you know, I know it sounds silly, but a lot of people sometimes don't really know what is private lending. How would you describe it to somebody? I would say private lending, at least in this, as far as in what we're dealing with, it's, you could also use the term asset-based lending. We're lending on the house itself. Our company, we don't pull credit. I don't know, other companies may. When I go look at a house, I look at it as would I take this house back? So we don't pull credit. We don't look at anything but the house. You call us with the deal. Um, and I look at it and I look at the renovation numbers that you give me, you know, talk to you and see if, if it's, do we, uh, is it, is it, do I agree with the renovation numbers? And it's type of loan to where the, the rates are going to be a little higher. But we can make a decision. I've had deals where people call me in the morning. And we're closing that afternoon. We do things that banks can't do. <clears throat> not only in closing time, we can we can lend on homes that a bank would not touch. But it's in, in a state of disrepair and everything like that. Or if you have bad credit, we're just a lot more flexible. And in today's competitive market, we allow you to move really quickly on homes that banks may not touch. Another term that people refer to private lending is, is a real popular term uh, and we use it a lot as well, but a term called hard money. 
or people refer to it also as private financing. Do you find that there's any real difference? And it's kind of a, kind of a silly question, yeah. but do you find that there's a difference between the two or do you also look at it as really the same thing? You know, in transparency, Kurt told me he was going to ask me this question. So I had to Google it because I really didn't know what is the real difference. And, and all the differences I could find seem to be semantics. The, the gist of what I see the real difference is hard money lenders tend to be more of a company, more of a structured process underwriting like we do. Private lending more alludes to your, your grandmother is going to loan you money on to go buy a house or it's more relationship based, a friend a family member, somebody like that that's going to loan you money. Um, and that's about the only real difference I found. Terms could be different one way or another. The private lender may charge you more, they may charge you less. But I didn't see any real meaningful differences between the two, none that would be different to you guys unless, you know, you had a, a grandmother that's going to loan you money at 0% interest. Um, that would be a, an example of a private lending situation. One of the things that that I hear from a lot of newer investors are things like, um, how do I find private lending? Where where do I find private lenders? Where are private lenders hanging out? It's it's kind of like this mythical, they're out there, but we don't know how to find them. Um, what are some of the ways, Craig, that you think people can can try no, to find it, private lenders? I would think it, it, it kind of you, maybe used to be hard to find. Now social media I mean, you get on Facebook and post something looking for a private lender in Memphis, Tennessee, it's going to pop up. I know I get uh, alerts all the time when somebody from, you know, from Canada is looking for a private lender in Memphis. It'll pop up on my feed and I'll talk to them. Or if you go to your local RIA group, a real estate investment group, I know everybody's probably online now and you don't get the level of, you know, you know, seeing, see, talking to everybody like you used to. But with social media these days, it's really, in the past couple of years, it's gotten so easy to find local guys to, to you know, call. And another resource is if you know uh, of a uh, any closing attorneys, call any closing attorney that you know of and ask who the, who the private lenders are, and they'll know. They'll tell you, yeah, call this guy, this guy, this guy, because they all do business with the private lenders, and they know who's closing all the deals for everybody. And it makes them look like a good guy to the private lenders when the attorneys send business to them. So they're, it's mutually beneficial for them. So calling, a, calling closing attorneys is a great resource. You can get all the closing attorneys, all the private lenders you want. Calling closing attorneys. Essentially, it's, it's just several different forms of networking. Uh, you know, wholesale, a wholesaler asking a flipper, you know, where'd you get your private private lender? And a lot of this stuff too, if I'm not, uh, mistaken here, Craig, private lenders, uh, like for us here in Memphis, we have the Memphis Daily News, which show real estate transactions when homes are bought and sold, but it also discloses who the lender is. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Uh, it's state to state. It differs. Memphis is what's called a reporting state. There's the other states are called non-reporting. Basically, that means all, all transactions in real estate in Memphis are made public. So you can see what everybody bought a home for, how much, who they loaned money from. If you go 20 miles south into Mississippi, you can't tell anything. Everything's not reported. Look and dagger. So it makes it really hard to pull comps and find out who's doing what. But Daily News in Memphis, if you're looking to really do some research in Memphis, go to the Daily News. They have an online, uh, they have a, a subscription-based service. I think it's $30 a month, but you can really – do a lot of research as to who's buying where. You can do it to build your base of, uh, if you're looking for someone to wholesale properties to, Daily News is a great resource. Get on there and you can find people uh, who's buying, who's selling, what prices are being paid. It's a really underutilized resource in Memphis. Um, but that's, yeah. Now, for for a lot of private lenders, and I kind of mentioned this just a little bit earlier, but uh, as a private lender, I know that you can only essentially speak for yourself and what your, what your lending terms and criteria are, which we'll get to here in just a minute. But um, would you say that most people who are seeking a private lender uh, are really looking for mainly two, but potentially three things? They're either looking to do a fix and flip, a possible burst strategy, 
where they would need to borrow funds and then do a refinance with their lender and the occasional transactional funding. Is that what you're seeing primarily? That's pretty much it. That covers 99% of it. Is there anything else out there that I, have I missed any type of loan that you've made for somebody that doesn't fall into that category? I, know, I guess what I'm saying is, is have you done any other types of loans? Loan, and first of all, we're prohibited from making loans for people that are buying homes for their um, personal residence. Um, I know there's some private lenders out there. I can't do it, but they make loans for someone what's called a bridge loan to where they need to close on their next purchase while they're waiting on their old purchase to sell. I can't do that, but that's one way things are done. I would say the main, the number one reason people use private lenders, because let's face it right now, you can go get an interest rate out there from banks for three and 4%. My rates are not that competitive. Why people are using us right now is number one, it's speed. Uh, being able to call, find a deal in the morning and call me up. And this has happened multiple times today. People are like, Craig, I found this deal. I'm going to offer this. Am I good to go? I'll pull my car over. I'll look up comps and they'll send me pictures of the phone or we'll get on a Facebook. Uh, you know, we'll get on a, a, on FaceTime, look it up. We'll look it over. They'll tell me about what it's going to cost to renovate and we'll look at the comps and I'll, I'll say, yeah, I'll make that loan. You can't, you can't even begin to get that type of thing with the bank. So I'll say the number one reason people are using people like me is, is for speed. And we can close as quickly as they can get title work ready. If you, if you have a property sitting there with title work ready to close, we can close the same day you bring it to me as long as the numbers match up. Um, another reason why people use this is because we don't pull credit. Um, you know, we don't require, if, if the deal's good enough, we can find everything fund the purchase, renovation, closing costs, and everything, as long as the numbers come in for us. So flexibility and speed, I would say that's the main reason you're going to use hard money. Um, I've had, back in the day when I used to exclusively use hard money, people would say, why do you pay those high rates? And I'm like, I can't wait around on banks. Banks, with it, with, this, with, with competitive as the market is now, if you make an offer and you put in there uh, contingent on bank financing, you're not going to buy anything right now. I had a great question come in real quick, Craig. I'm going to read it here. It's from Alex and he asks, are there any quote unquote gotchas to look out for when it comes to private lenders? Where do most people get stuck with getting uh, money from private lenders? I mean, one thing that I see, um, and I don't know if it's like, it's a gotcha or not, or necessarily where they get stuck, but um, a lot of times I see people get turned down for loans again, and it comes back to the property itself. Uh, Either the private lender doesn't feel comfortable either with the numbers or uh, the location of the property. I mean, do you want to elaborate on that, Craig? Because I know that you have uh, had to help educate potential investors before on helping them to kind of realize that this is really not a good deal that you want to get into. I mean, yeah, I mean, almost every day I turn somebody down on a deal and I'll tell them you're better, you're better off doing no deal than a bad deal every day of the week. Um, I've been doing this 20 years and I, we've, made a lot of money on deals and we've lost a lot of money on deals. Um, you got a kid behind your skirt, but uh, of course I do, <laughs> but, but no, but, and I would say that's a, that's a tool that you can use, especially for an out of town investor, having me go look at it and say, man, you don't want to buy this deal. This, this deal is one block away from the worst street in Memphis and just little things I know just from doing this, doing this for so long that you may not know. So, me telling you no may be the best thing that can happen to you on a deal like that. Um, and another thing, when we part of the renovation process is we we break, we do renovation draws. We may give them the first when when they close the property, they may get their first draw, and we'll break the rest of the renovation draws into thirds, and we'll have certain criteria they need to hit before we'll release the draws. And uh, I've had many situations to where they'll call me and say, Craig, we're ready for a second draw. They've put the roof on and they've got carpet down and I'll send somebody from my office to go look at it. And they'll be like, there's no roof on that house or there's no, there's no carpet down. And I don't release the draw and therefore they don't pay this contractor and service for us. Uh, some of the, some of the underwriting things and some of our, some of the, some of the stuff we have in place. And it, it's it, us, us telling you guys, no, is there to protect you as well as me. Um, if it's a loan and we see something bad, if I go there and I see a, 
a foundation that I know there's an issue with, I go look at it. I'll tell you guys, I'm not loaning because of this way. And it, it's as much to protect you as me. So sometimes the best thing you can have happen is me say, you don't want this house. You got a quick little shout out here. looks like a current client of yours, Craig. Her name is a uh, Felicia Carter. I think you may, she mentioned that you've done a loan for her before. Yeah. So she's doing right. a quick little plug, which is great. So, um, now, what, once an investor finds a private lender, um, how does that person get a loan from them? And, I, and that's kind of a very broad question because I guess what I'm looking for is, I mean, you and I have, you know, we've had so many other type of private lending companies contact us and, you know, all private lenders are different in terms of uh, the, the qualification process. Like you, for example, you mentioned that it's strictly asset-based based on the property. Um, it's very flexible. You've got a kind of a simple basic application that people fill out. But aside from that, it's, it's a fairly simple, straightforward process. Then you've got the companies who want to run your credit and they want right. a thousand dollar application fee. That's and- interesting. Yeah, I can differentiate it. And I'll tell you one thing that makes Avalon Capital different from some of these other, you know, quite frankly, larger companies is that, it's my underwriting. I don't care about your credit. I go look at these homes and let me preface this by saying we did not take or foreclose on a single house in 2020. We did not have a single loan go bad. And that's testament to our underwriting. We turned down a lot of loans, but I, when you go to a normal, like an anchor loans or one of these big lending home, all these things, they're going to put a credit. They're going to send an appraiser. They're going to send comps. It's going to be lengthy. It's going to be a lot of paperwork. It's going to be almost as hard as a traditional loan. Minimum 10 days to close. Yeah, I go look at a house, and I don't mean this in a bad way, but I look at it. Do I want to take this house back? Um, Or can I take this house back and still make a profit or break even on it? That's my underwriting. I look at this house, and I'm like, yeah, if I had to take that back, I can send my workers over there to finish the job and, and get it done. And that's my, I mean, it sounds crazy, but that's my underwriting. I look at it and if it's a good deal to me, it's a good deal for you. Let's go. And that's it. Um, And you're not going to get that with the big companies. And I'd say that's, that's what sets us apart from the other companies. Um, If I could put anything that makes us different, um, our speed and our lack of, um, you know, having, being a big company in San Francisco that's having to, you know, they have to do all these due diligence because they're not, you know, they're not experts in the market. We only loan in Memphis and the surrounding area. So we're experts in it. We've been home flippers for 20 years. So when somebody tells me they have a $10,000 rehab budget and I know it's a $30,000 rehab budget, I'll let them know. Um, so that, that's what sets us, us apart. We really not, we don't have a lot of paperwork to do and, um, you know, pretty easy qualifying. Now we'll get, we'll get to Avalon Capital's uh, lending terms and things like that here in just a minute. But in general, when someone who is new or never borrowed private money before and they are trying to find private lenders in their market or private lenders that will lend in their particular market, what would you say an average, like, and I'm looking for more of like ranges, meaning like uh, if they come across a private money lender and they learn about their terms and fees and loan to value and that kind of stuff, what would you say is a, a fair range in that uh, that someone just should consider? You know, I would say I see terms anywhere from usually the points are anywhere from three to five points. Um, a no, point, no, no. What, what, what are points? A point is one per, a percentage. Um, so if it's five points, that's 5% of the loan amount. So if it's a $50,000 loan, five points would be $2,500. Okay. Interest rates are anywhere from eight to I'd say eight to 18%, anywhere in there annualized. Most of these loans are not made to be loans that are in for a long time. Most of them are six month loans, which are loans designed to let you buy the house, or renovate the house, either refinance it or sell it. That's the purpose of these loans. So the interest rate may be higher, but um, they're short term and the, the amount of money you spend extra interest is not doesn't end up being that big of a deal on a short term, like six months. What about loan to value on average? What are you seeing? 75%. On yeah, average. So that's the average. That's kind of, that's kind of the benchmark. Everybody needs to be at about 75%. 
Uh, and a lot of times, a lot of times with private. Let me explain how 75% is calculated. Let's just for an easy number, let's say there's a home that's going to be worth $100,000 after you renovate it, but it's going to take $20,000 to get it to that point. So you take, um, you take a hundred thousand at the end, the after repaired value back out 20,000 and then you take 75% of 80,000. So you're going to be, you know, right at $60,000 in that case. Okay. Um, do you, what would you, from other private lending institutions, I'll see a lot of them require on average 10 to 20% down payment, regardless of how good of a deal is. Is that what you're seeing too? A lot of the times? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of times, a lot of hard money lenders are even requiring that. Um, we go well again. We do it straight on asset based lending. So if the deal's good enough, uh, we can we can wrap everything down in the loan. We we can wrap the purchase price, renovation, and closing costs all into the loan if if the deal is good enough. You know, it's interesting because um, being around you and Avalon Capital for the last several years, as I've seen it really progress and grow. Uh, the Avalon Capital has really catapulted a lot of local investors, businesses, uh, where, where a lot of these guys that you and I know who were wholesalers for the longest time, uh, now they have access to private lending and it has really been a game changer for them. I mean, how, how critical is it, would you say, Craig, uh, for somebody to make sure that they have a, a private lender or two to be able to reach out to, uh, how has that changed them well, from your experience, from what you've seen? Oh yeah. Yeah. It's, it's great. We've, we've actually kind of been a market disruptor because we're, you know, we're lending to a lot of people that are quite frankly, unlendable. I mean, they have terrible credit. We're making loans because they find a great deal and we realize the value in a great deal because we're, our company's able to realize it. And we've seen some guys really, make pretty extraordinary money in this market uh, by, by taking down a house where they would normally have to assign it to one of the uh, big companies in town, um, we, you know, and, and make their $5,000 assignment fee. Now we allow them to take the house down, um, you know, close on it and, uh, and then go and make the big, you know, twenty twenty five thousand dollars $25,000 lick on a flip. Whereas they wouldn't have been able to do that before. And that's been, as far as that's been one of the most rewarding things I've done in the last couple of years, seeing some guys that normally their credit wasn't where it needed to be, but they, they did they have the ability to grind and work and they went out there and found them a house, found a good deal and really hustled and found it. And instead of turning it over, making a quick five, $6,000, they were able to secure it and take it down with me and get their, get their lending funds and uh, make a big lick. And I'm seeing guys really making life changing money for themselves in Memphis. It's been great to see. Um, Oni O'Neill Brown asked a real quick question. That, you know, we've been talking a lot about short-term uh, transactions, but what about long-term transactions? Uh, O'Neill, unfortunately, Avalon Capital does not have a long-term private lending solution in place. Just the, the business is really not set up for that type of lending. But I will tell you that there are. Yeah, I mean, there are there are private lenders out there that will do uh, more long term strategies. I'll give you an example. Um, I have borrowed money from Craig and Avalon Capital for uh, some of my short term uh, transactions, but I but mine are more from a uh, a burr strategy where I get a private loan and then I I do a refinance takeout in a short amount of time. But I also have private lenders that will make me very very similar loans but I was able to negotiate more long-term uh, outcomes, meaning I've got, I've got private lenders that I can do three to five year loans with uh, because my strategy is, is I'm going to buy anywhere from three to six homes all, you know, within 12 months or so, maybe 18 months. And then I go to my commercial lender and then I do a package refinance. Uh, so I have all these houses under a jumbo loan. So there are private lenders out there that will do longer term. Uh, it's just Avalon Capital is not doing that. Is that correct, Craig? That's right. Yeah. We, we, we may try to get there. We've, we've tried some programs to where, you know, we sell the note to some, some more long-term guys like Pier Street. There's some companies, but it's been pretty cumbersome. And, you know, long-term, we may try to get to, to, to include a, a long-term 
you know, note, but uh, quite honestly, it really eats up a lot of capital to start wrapping notes up into, you know, 15, 20, 30 year mortgages. Um, we just don't, we flat out don't have the capital <laughs> to start doing a bunch of permanent sure. loans. We would eat up all of our, our, of our operating capital. So right now we're only short term. We do have some great, um, lenders that are focused on, on, uh, you working with investors. They can wrap in some good, uh, 30 year mortgages with incredible rates. Now, Mallory asked a great question, and I think I can answer this for her. Uh, Mallory's question is, is, have your clients had any issues refinancing, and what happens if they can't get refinanced for some reason? Well, uh, when private lender, when, when investors come to Craig looking for a private loan, Craig knows up front what type of loan they're looking for. So if an investor comes and says, hey, I've got a house that I'm going to flip, we know that that's a short-term hold strategy for them so that once they fix it up, it's going to put on the market and it's going to eventually sell. But if it's a scenario where an investor is going to do uh, the burst strategy where they want to keep that house and refinance out with a conventional lender, <clears throat> excuse me, typically before loans like that are made and approved by Avalon Capital, uh, Craig will require that person to provide a essentially like a refinance loan commitment letter from the lender that they're actually going to do the takeout financing with. So um, I'd say, I don't know, Craig, if you've had anybody who's ever been turned down for that, just because you, you qualify them on the front end with their takeout lender. So otherwise, if they were not approved for that takeout refinance loan, you wouldn't make them the private money on the front end for that strategy, but you still may lend to them if they want to do a flip, correct? Yeah, that's right. You know, I, it, oddly enough, we've never had the situation where somebody was wanting to do the burst strategy and I have a home that didn't appraise for enough. And basically I, I, I'm also a real estate broker. So when someone tells me what they think it'll appraise for, I look it up. And if it's, if it's within reason, um, I can look it up and tell them if they're way off base. And, and so we, we know we're about, about where they have to be, but I've not had that situation yet. And to answer the question, what would happen if, if you couldn't get, if you didn't get approved for it, it would be one of two things. You could try to sell the house and get out of it, or you'd have to have the cash to put down to, to bring the property, the loan amount down to a point that, uh, that, that, or with the loan, within the loan to value ratios. So, I mean, it either had to bring some cash down to bring it down if it didn't appraise for enough, or you just have to try to sell it. One or the other would be the two exit strategies I can think of for that. Sure. Sure. Um, give us a quick definition of what a transactional funding or a transactional loan looks like. Okay. Well, we do. Um, it used to be when you were, when you were doing, um, what's called a double close. You used to be able to, there's a lot of guys that didn't have a lot of funds. They wanted to buy a house and sell it. And what was great about the double close is the person you're selling the house to didn't know how much profit you're making. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with what an assignment contract is where you just assign it to them and they see exactly how much money you're making. And if you're making a lot, sometimes that can scare people away. But a double close is where you buy and sell the home at the same transaction. You, you're sitting at a closing table. You sign two closing documents. You sign one for buying the property. And then you sign, an, sign another set of docs for selling the property all at one time. Back before, uh, after, right, right around 2008, you used to be able to take the, the end buyer's funds and use those funds for your purchase and then you would sell it back to him. So his funds would fund the whole transaction. They changed laws where they don't allow that anymore. The buyer buying the property actually has to have the funds to buy and close the property. And then he can sell it to the, uh, sell it to the end buyer. So what they need is a transactional lenders, uh, lender. We did one today where we basically wired the money in in the morning. He buys it. The end user buys it from him. And then they wire me back the funds. The funds, our, our charges are really low on this. For under under a $50,000 loan, we charge uh, $500. If it's between $500,000 and uh, $100,000, $50, we charge $1,000. 
And then, you know, we were usually at about 1% uh, if it's over $100,000. But um, that's really good because, I mean, I've seen people do, that use us for transactional funding where they're making fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 on a deal. And they know if they wrote an assignment fee for fifty, sixty thousand uh, dollars, they're, they're the end buyer would tell them to go to hell, quite honestly. But um, when it's double closing and things like this, they can they can kind of hide that it, to put it mildly, I guess the best way to put it. But it makes it to where they don't know till it's after it's over how much money people made. So we get we we do a lot of transactional funding, and that's something we like to do. So if you ever have a deal where you know you found it, you know that you know the deal, and you know a buyer. You want to move it in one day and you don't have, you know, $100,000 to take it down, call us and we can do a transaction alone to make the process, you know, fund that day. And then now, now let me ask you this, Craig, because I, let me ask you this real quick, because I know that you primarily stick to fix and flip loans and kind of like the, the immediate Memphis Mid-South area. Would you consider doing a transactional loan exactly like what you explained uh, in another part of the country, as long as you were able to verify that there's to verify that it's a true transactional funding. Right. Yeah. The one we did today was in Little Rock, Arkansas, but we would do a transactional loan just about anywhere as long as we could verify that it's a a true transactional loan. And what I mean by that is if the end seller doesn't buy it that day, the deal doesn't happen. Um, Because what I don't want to have happen is say it's a transactional loan I wire the funds in and then the buyer backs out and I've made a guy a loan for, you know, $500. And uh, it's a deal that I didn't really go look at or underwrite it the correct way. But if it's true transactional funding to where the deal doesn't close until the buyer and seller both sign their docs, um, we will do, we can do transactional funding anywhere. We're getting close to wrapping up. Uh, tonight, what I want to do is uh, focus a little bit more on Avalon Capital in general in terms of if somebody wanted to learn more about you, tell us uh, what some of the, essentially it's kind of like give us the Avalon Capital pitch, uh, loan terms, qualification, where you're making loans, um, you know, yeah. what what are the terms? Talk about <clears throat> the points. Well, and- First of all, we're making loans for the most part in the Memphis area. Memphis, Tennessee, North Mississippi, which is DeSoto County, and the West Memphis and Little Rock, Arkansas areas. That's kind of our Mid-South area we loan in. Our terms are five points loan origination, meaning if it's a $100,000 loan, our loan origination fees are $5,000. We charge a a 12% annualized rate, so your interest payments will be – 1% 1% per month. So if it's a $100,000 loan, your payment will be $1,000 interest only per month. Um, our terms are six month loans. Um, it, and usually at six months, people are able to buy the home, renovate it and have it either sold or refinanced in that time. If you need to, if you need to extend it for an additional six months, we charge a, a 2%, two point renewal fee. And, um, that's about it. If you, and if, you know, you can get our name and everything from uh, Kurt, I'm sure, it, our, our, our contact info. If you find a house and say, Craig, I got this deal, just popped up, but let me know. You know, Here's my numbers. Here's what's going to take to renovate it. Here's pictures. Send it to us. Uh, we, we're made to be speed guys. We can go quick, and that's where we set ourselves apart because a lot of times the best deals don't happen slow, especially in this market. If you sit around and wait, there's going to be 10 people all trying to buy the same deal. So, Where we set ourselves apart, we know we're not the cheapest guys. We're not as cheap as the banks, but where we are is we're really fast. So call us when you find a deal that needs funding real quick, and uh, we can make that happen. Craig, if somebody wants to get a hold of you to maybe talk about private lending more, uh, what's a, what's a, how, how can people reach you? I don't know if you want to give your phone number out or if at least an email address. Yeah. My email address is uh, Craig, that's C R A I G dot Jennings. J E N N I N G S one at gmail.com. And that's the number one numerical number one. And you know, I don't mind giving you my cell phone number. If you want to call me and ask me some deals, um, ask me some, you know, about a a prospective deal. My phone number is area code 901-859-9070. And I'd be happy to talk to you about what we do and, you know, what our parameters are. And again, uh, you can certainly reach out to Avalon Capital 
on Facebook. Got a nice little company page there that you can connect as well. So uh, make sure you reach out to Craig either by phone, email, or Facebook, or you can reach me too if you need to get a Craig uh, as well. But um, does, before we really kind of get out of here, does anybody who's still on the, who's still on the meetup tonight, does anybody have any questions for Craig? If you have a question and you want to ask it, just go ahead and unmute yourself and ask. Anybody? Hey, I don't have a question, uh, but I just wanted to say that I will be using uh, Avalon Capital Services here to close on a property, I think within a week and a half. Yeah. Uh, I wish I had a narrow that closing a little faster. Now that I know you got speed like that, but you can do uh, it. Seller, seller's out of town in Arizona, so she's okay. But about, about a week and a half, we'll be closing, and I'm just – Man, just like you said, I call you, you looked it up, and uh, you told me what you can do with it. So I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to which taking property it. Down. I hate that I don't know it offhand. Which, which property? Uh, it's uh, 7521 Wheatfield. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, yeah, that's right. Craig doesn't know the investors, but he knows them by uh, the address. So uh, Tom, Thomas, Thomas, you should have changed your name on your little screen there. Rather than put Thomas Johnson, just should have put like 123 Main Street. Yeah. <laughs> I, couldn't I couldn't see the name. Yeah. That's awesome. Awesome. See, that's, that's awesome. I'm, I'm glad that's, that's, that's a great little testimony there. I, I didn't have to pay you to come on and say nice words about Craig. So awesome. I'm glad, I'm glad that the lending is working out for you and it's exciting. Are you, are you going to, are you going to do a fix and flip on that deal? I'm going to actually hold that one uh, for Airbnb property. I actually own the one right next door. So I was like, it's no way I, I mean, I got to take this property down, you know, there you go. So, Makes it easy to manage them both then. Yes, definitely. Awesome, man. Awesome. Well, thanks for jumping on and, and uh, letting us know. Uh, anybody else have any quick questions before we roll out? And like I said, you know, just to, you know, make sure that you're following us on Meetup so that you can hear about what we've got going on next meeting. Uh, Craig, do you have any final words? I don't have any words, but don't don't be shy to, to call me up even if you, you know, I'm getting some reverberation from somebody. Oh, got to mute yourself, Rivaldo. There you go. But anyway, oh, no, I'm not feel, feel free to call me. I, you know, I, I work all the time, but I work all the time I'm making my phone call. So call me on my cell phone. Uh, like I said, 901-859-9070. I'm on my phone all the time. So just call me. I'll pick it up, and I'll try to look it up, pull comps on my phone, and I'm happy to tell you if it's – you know, not area you need to be in, or if you're, you know, if if I think the the renovations are too cheap, what they're telling you, or something like that, we 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 do as much yeah, as all area. investors. Yeah, like much we do investors. We do That's awesome, Craig. Well, again, thank you everybody for being on tonight's call. Um, we are recording this tonight, so for those who want to go back and watch it again, I will be uploading this video at least by Monday. I'll have it on our YouTube page, which I will then share on Facebook as well. Page, which I will then share on Facebook as well. Gotta love that reverb there. So, all right, guys. Well, listen, you everybody have a great night. Thanks so much. All right, guys. Um, if anybody has any questions, just get a hold of us, and we will do what we can to help you guys. So, everybody have a great rest of the evening. Just get a hold of us.